from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. All right, yeah, that's pretty cool. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story came out late last week, and because we have open phones on Friday, we really couldn't make a whole topic out of it on Friday, so I'm going to do it now. So uh, it's not that I don't get around to reading the paper. Does anyone call it the paper anymore? I don't know. But, uh, you know, there are just some topics that have to wait through that Friday show, and then we, then we can do them on Monday. But here is the topic. This, and... Uh, it's where so many of our stories come from. This from the L.A. Times. Starbucks got caught with its hand in the tip jar last week and was ordered to pay California baristas more than $100 million. In a San Diego County class action lawsuit which means the lawyers probably got the bulk of the money. A judge offered the uh, ordered the coffee giant to pay back tips with interest that the company had handed over to shift supervisors. So see, there you were thinking that your favorite barista, Jennifer, is going to get your dollar for your Frappuccino. And in reality, uh, Starbucks was taking that tip jar and doling it out to the management. Yeah. I told you a long time ago, if you tip at Starbucks, you're a moron. Doesn't this prove it? it says here some baristas could receive more than $10,000, according to their attorney. I like how much the attorney is receiving. Probably more than 10000 The ruling was met with cheers by California baristas. By the way, that... Among others, one of the greatest scams on earth. One thing Starbucks is great at is taking stuff that is menial or isn't worth much and making it sound like it's worth a lot or making it sound important. Barista, you're a fast food worker. You're a fry cook with coffee beans. That is what you are. Seriously. Seriously speaking, the way it looks to me, and I'm not being racist here. On the contrary, I'm trying to make a statement against racism, so be careful when you hear what I'm about to say. Uh, I think they, they, if they put all the fast food workers in a room, they take all the ones who work Spanish and who speak Spanish, say, Starbucks, not for you. Okay, You take all the fast food employees who speak English as their primary language and, and are not Latino, and you call them baristas. And then they feel good about going to a fast food job. And somehow I know those morons at Starbucks feel superior to their fast food brethren at McDonald's and Jack in the Box and Carl's Jr. and Taco Bell and KFC and all the other fast food joints, Wendy's. Hence the tip jar. But in reality, sweetheart, you are nothing more than a glorified fry cook. That is all you are. Ever notice you almost never see Latinos working at Starbucks? Latinos are smart enough to know that Starbucks is a fast food job like anything else, but isn't it interesting? Jesus. 
You don't see tip jars at McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. You don't see them at KFC or Taco Bell or Carl's Jr., But those uppity snots who make coffee at Starbucks and call themselves baristas, they put a tip jar up. Now, you know, there's people at McDonald's put coffee in a cup and they charge almost half, a little more than half of what Starbucks charges for a cup of drip coffee. That was rated higher in Consumer Reports, by the way, than Starbucks. Do you know that? This is like the worst nightmare that could ever happen to Starbucks. This is true. Recently, Consumer Reports magazine did, and you can look it up on ConsumerReports.org. Consumer Reports did a taste test. They did a survey of major fast food joints, including Starbucks, and it is a fast food joint, by the way. And people chose McDonald's coffee over Starbucks. McDonald's coffee is a dollar a cup, and Starbucks hovers around a dollar seventy-five for drip. Forcing Starbucks now, which is in panic mode lately, to consider lowering the price of drip coffee to a dollar to compete with their fast food brethren over there at McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts. Heaven forbid. But you know what's great about this recession we have now is, you know, all the cream rises to the top. And now we are seeing all the happy BS here that we've been getting over the years about, you know, baristas and, oh, uh, a Starbucks experience. All you're doing is walking inside a fast food joint. It's not an experience. A bunch of blithering morons with laptops sitting in there acting all uppity like you know, because they sit there typing on their laptops and talking on their cell phones and chit-chatting about triple-A music, they think somehow they're superior to the people who go to the other fast food place called McDonald's. And now at the recession, Starbucks is running for cover. Because you know what? Consumer Reports said their coffee is not as good as McDonald's. And we're talking about the drip coffee. Yeah, they didn't rate Frappuccinos and things like that. But, you know, McDonald's doesn't make that stuff anyway. So uh, the people at Starbucks have been very uppity. And now with the recession coming, I think not only are people going to be tipping less at Starbucks, I think people are going to be going to Starbucks less. Because as people lose their jobs, as people get foreclosed in their homes, the idea of, of, of bragging to people that you pay $5 for a cup of coffee, 6 bucks with a tip, not impressing anybody anymore. I'm more impressed when Dean tells me he went to McDonald's and got a cup of coffee for a buck. Then I'm impressed. Dean tells me he's got his Costco card. Now, that impresses me. Somebody telling me they paid five times as much as something is worth to get it, that was impressive in the 90s, maybe the early 2000s, but not anymore. Not now. So I think the Starbucks story is fascinating because there you were putting your money in the tip jar every day thinking you were helping your favorite barista. And in reality, you were giving the money to the shift supervisor or the manager, as they call them at fast food places. Yeah. It says here, the ruling was met with cheers by California baristas. I'm stoked, said Lakeisha Smith, who makes coffee drinks in the Starbucks at Sunset and La Brea in Los Angeles. Wow. I'm just shocked that we'll get that money back. Smith, 23, said she found out about the lawsuit from a a letter sent to employees. Starbucks Corporation said it was outraged and vowed to appeal. In a statement, the company said the decision, quote, is not only contrary to law, it is fundamentally unfair and beyond all common sense and reason. Now, you know what's beyond common sense and reason, Howard Schultz? You know what's beyond common sense and reason? The idea that you gross $9 billion a year and that people have to tip your employees because you don't pay them enough. What a scam. You know, if I ever go to Starbucks, I'm not paying your employees. You pay your – if I buy a cup of coffee for $4.50, tell you what, you pay your employees. I'm not paying them. And I'm not paying your shift supervisors either, you morons. Forget it. The story goes on to say that Starbucks said, quote, 
Our shift supervisors deserve their fair share of the tips that they receive from the tip jars in our California stores. It plans to vigorously appeal and to seek a delay of the court's ruling prohibiting staff supervisors from receiving tips. So to all our listeners in Seattle, Dallas, Portland, Las Vegas, and all the other stations along our network, guess what? This just applies to California. When you put money in the tip jar, you idiot, the money is not going to Susie or Jennifer or Sweetie there back behind the counter who makes your coffee. It's going to the manager of the store. And he might dole it out or he might not. Who knows what happens to that money? You're an idiot for tipping the employees at a company like Starbucks. You're an idiot. Idiot. This is not like tipping your favorite bartender. When I tip my favorite bartenders, you know what happens? I get a little extra on the poor. Just a little, just enough. When I walk in, my drink is made. He knows what I drink. It's ready and waiting for me if he knows I'm coming. If I've just walked in the door, he drops everything to make my drink. Tipping the bartender has its rewards. Starbucks... Like the idiot that you are, you stand in line with the other morons. Nobody ever says, oh, Bill, good to see you. Yes, I remember that tip you gave me. Here, Here's your Frappuccino. It doesn't happen. You have to stand there like the rest of the cattle and wait to order your coffee. And then what do they do? Do they ever give you a little extra shot of espresso or something? No. They put the, 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 the requested amount of coffee in a cup and they write your name on it. Bill? Bill, do you want the latte, Bill? That's it. That's worth a tip. You're an idiot. And now Starbucks has shown what an idiot you are. By Now you find out they take the tip jars, and the the tips do not necessarily go to the person you think you're tipping. Anybody who leaves a tip at Starbucks after hearing about this is a total maroon, a total dork. You're an idiot. What are you paying for? What a goon. By the way, you know what I just did? I know, I'm insane. I just bought a second house, as you know, and I took my original nuclear espresso maker. It's a one-touch espresso maker, and I brought it to my second home in Santa Barbara County. And that way I made way for my new super automatic one-touch espresso maker that is a one-touch cappuccino maker. One button, and I've got cappuccino. As good as or better than Starbucks or anybody else. Now, the machine costs $3,300, but with what you spend at Starbucks, if you're spending 5 bucks a day every workday at Starbucks, you may not want to think about this, everybody. In your average work year, let's say you get four weeks off vacation, which most Americans don't, but let's say you do. That's 240 days a year times five. Let's do the math. You're spending $1,200 a year at Starbucks right now. That's if you don't eat anything. $1,200 a year. That's if you don't tip like me. In three years, your machine is paid for. And you didn't have to leave the house. You dork. Says here the decision today, this is Starbucks speaking now in their statement. The decision today, in our view, represents an extreme example of an abuse of the class action procedures in California courts. Uh, Starbucks noted that the case was filed by a single former barista and, quote, the interests of the shift supervisors were not represented in this litigation. Why were they supposed to be represented? They're the ones who got the money. They're the ones being sued, essentially. The, per- the barista should have called the shift supervisors and gotten their opinion. Well, that's great. Next time I file a lawsuit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the people I'm suing, uh, suing or fighting against. I'm going to ask them what their opinion is and then put them in on the lawsuit. Forget it. Now, listen carefully, folks. You're putting money into that tip jar at Starbucks. I want you to see what happens to that money. It says here, money collected in tip jars was put into safes at each Starbucks. 
and apportioned weekly to each employee based on the number of hours they worked. According to attorney Terry Chapko, who represented the plaintiffs of the baristas in the class action suit. Oh, yes. The average tip distributed to baristas and supervisors was $1.71 an hour. This according to San Diego County Superior Court Judge Patricia Cowett. Cowett's ruling said Starbucks practice was a violation of state law that prohibits managers and supervisors from sharing in employee tips. Her ruling on penalties followed her February 28th decision in favor of the baristas in the class action suit. Wow. Says here, former barista Ju Chu complained in a 2004 lawsuit that shift supervisors who also make coffee and serve customers were illegally getting a cut of employee tips. Says here the suit was granted class action status in 2006 and could affect as many as 100,000 current and former baristas who worked in California stores since October 2000. Chapko said, quote, and this is the attorney for the baristas. They were subsidizing Starbucks labor costs by helping the company pay its supervisors. Hey, dude. It's the same thing when we tip the baristas, you idiot. Why should we tip any of those goddamn people? Seriously. Chapko, the attorney for the baristas, said this is about getting money back to the lowest paid employees. As, as, as a customer, not my problem. Not my problem. Who are the lowest paid employees? It's not my problem. Unbelievable. I want to get your opinion on this. I mean, all of this. The fact that Starbucks, by the way, I'm assuming, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll hear from the legal department at Starbucks. I'm assuming that this is what Starbucks does in every state. It's just California that is stopping them from doing it. So we have listeners in many states who listen to this program uh, tomorrow morning when you go to Starbucks and you, you're an idiot and you put a tip in the jar, you are helping them subsidize the employees, the supervisors, the managers, and anybody else they, they want to dole that money out to. And your favorite little barista, old chipper in the morning and everything who you like to tip, she's getting a fraction of what you put in that tip jar. You idiot. You're a moron. You know that, right? Tom Likas. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. I hope that you're writing down all these hours that you're spending on the radio, because these are public and community service hours, sir. You are doing a community service. You are spouting the truth and telling these dumb people that I see all day long to use condoms and stop procreating. Right. You are doing community service, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going great. I I am the biggest Starbucks hater of all time. I've gotten to heated discussions with my wife over Starbucks because she doesn't realize how much money she's spending. I had to go ahead and say, look it. You're spending at least five bucks a day on coffee. Some days you go twice, so you're spending, breaking it down, 150, 200 bucks a month on coffee. So she she wasn't getting it until you know I had to break it down to her and, and you know diagram it to how much money she's spending. So now finally she broke off Starbucks and she's going to McDonald's. She's going to whatever AM PM, but it's ridiculous why these people think they're so cool because they spend four or five bucks on coffee. Right, and they go to, by the way, they're so cool, they go to a chain. It's a chain store. It's a fast food joint that happens to be called Starbucks Coffee. What makes it hip or cool? The Starbucks experience. Let me talk to Howard Schultz for a minute about the Starbucks experience. Here's the experience. I arrive at the store, and I stand in a long line of people who think they're better than everybody else. 
That is and the they, whole thing. And they stand there for 10 minutes apiece trying to decide what they want off the menu. These are people who come in every day, and they never – they were in line for 10 minutes, and they couldn't look up at the menu before they got to the front counter, especially the women. They could not look up there and decide what they want before they get to the counter. And the thing is, these people that go there, they just they think they're a little more high class or upper class because they're spending this money on it. And what you said about Hispanics working there, I have not, not that I go in there very often, but I have not seen hardly any Hispanics working at Starbucks. That's the point I'm making. Uh, you know, I see Latino employees, and you know, of course, El Pollo Loco and McDonald's and Jack in the Box and Carl's Jr. How often do you see Latinos working at Starbucks? I, I don't, and I wonder if it's uh, something to do with racial or something. You know, why aren't well, they? Well, there's the next class action suit. Yeah, I, I got your back there, Tom. Got your back. Thank all you right, for that. Tom, just, all right, take care. Thank you. Hmm? Something to think about. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Carolina on the Tom Like You Show, or is it Carolina? Uh, Carolina, Carolina, anyway, it's fine. Uh, wow, Tom, first off, I want to say I've been listening to you since I was four years old. You're like a third parent to me. Oh, I love that. Sound, sounds odd, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, about Starbucks, they are like the biggest posers ever. Like, you see all these little pseudo-intellectual indie hipsters going in there thinking they're cool, but when in fact that's just a glorified fast food place, that, like, food is ungodly bad for you, and then they've got all these, like, Barnes & Noble-esque, like, murals on the wall. What the hell, you know? Oh, yeah, uh, I, like the women who go in there read any books. Yeah, dude, it's like, go, go to the library. I, I just want my coffee, and even then it's not that great. And it's all appearances, man. Like, like you know how people pay for fancy-ass chocolates, but they're, they're not anywhere as near as good as Hershey, you know? Well, I, like... I wouldn't go that far, but I will say that uh, I, I will say <laughs> that Starbucks is a fast food joint. Nothing more, nothing less. The biggest yeah. scam in the world is telling little white kids, hey, you're a barista now, like it's something to aspire to. Yeah, exactly. You see these little dudes with their emo haircuts and their little, like, band pins saying, whoa, dude, I'm a barista. I'm, like, hip. I'm not, like, that beaner dude at the in and out you know? And right. It's, it's by, but, but, by the way, thinking Starbucks is hip is so 90s. I mean, that's so in the past. Yeah. We're, we're in a recession I, now. People are losing their homes. And this idea that you're hip to, to spend half your salary on coffee is just it's way past our time. You know the dot com era is over, folks. It's over. Yeah. Do you know they're I mean, closing? Do you know they're gonna close a hundred Starbucks? Have you ever? When's the last time you heard wow. of Starbucks closing locations? Dude, there's like all right where I live. There's a Starbucks inside in Albertsons, and then right like ten steps away from it, there's another Starbucks. I swear. Yeah. Actually, I think I, I my neighborhood there's a Starbucks, and then inside the Starbucks there's another Starbucks. No way. Yeah, you go inside the Starbucks, and then, then there's another door, and you go in, and it's another Starbucks. That's nuts. And then near my school. No, but, like no, but it gets stuff. better, dude. Okay, here's what happens. I, I was going to the bathroom, and I go in there, and they had a barista in the men's room. Really? Uh, one oh, yeah. time, I, was, I went into the ladies' room. I opened up the stall. There's a barista there asking me if I wanted shots. You know? Yeah. Come on. I mean, and then near my school, there's one outside a shopping mall. Then you go inside Target, and there's like two. What the hell? <laughs> it just, it, they're everywhere, man. They're, they're going to take over. I mean, I, I... No, they're not. No, they're not. They finally, they finally have reached the level of saturation. They, for the first time, they're showing declines in profitability. Yeah. They had to bring back the original CEO, Howard Schultz, and to fire the guy who was running it. And, and now they're getting rid of uh, the, the, the food, and they're going to cut the price of coffee, and they're closing 100 locations. These are not good times for Starbucks. Yeah, and then on top of that, the food itself is bad for you. Did you know that the Frappuccinos, like, there was a study done, and they're in the top 10 foods you should never eat. And well, it was, I like, number two or something. I don't, what's it, behind Cinnabon? What? <laughs> Yeah, like in that, they had like Campbell soup on there, and then they had Big Macs, and then the fresh Campbell soup. Yeah, yeah, they're. What are you, a communist? You don't like Campbell soup? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I'm not for communism. <laughs> My goodness. Next, you're going to tell me the Subway sandwich that goes by Campbell soup is no good. 
Oh, no, no. <laughs> so- All right, uh, just check. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jared on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. So I got the tail end of your of the Starbucks chat um, right before the commercial. I just wanted to mention. I don't know if you have already that the uh, you know the managers and assistant managers or what you know whatever name Starbucks gives them, those guys do uh, serve the coffee, um, you know, from time to time, and, and especially when it gets busy. I'm not defending Starbucks because I think it's idiotic. Why don't they well. tip the guy who t- p- picks up the dumpster in the back and dumps it into the back of the truck? Well, Why don't they take the guy who delivers the coffee cups and the lids? They give some tips to him too. Well, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna say. I mean, you know, you have to draw a line somewhere because it's the same as, as as like car sales or anything else. It, it, you know, it's up to. Starbucks I'm drawing the draw line, line. I'm drawing the line at this. If you can't pay your employees after I spent four dollars and fifty cents on a cup of coffee, your business is mismanaged. Well, I, the other question I want to ask you is, you know, you're from New York. I know you haven't been out there for a long time, but I, you know, I went to school out east, and now I live out here, and and I'm originally from Denver, and there is not a Dunkin' Donuts to be found. No, in, Dunkin' Donuts and, is an East Coast uh, chain. It is not not a West Coast chain. It's in every state, I think. No, it's not. California. No, it's not. Is that? Are you sure? No, it's uh, Dunkin' Donuts is regional. Oh, uh, I, I thought it was nationwide because it's, it's well, because like everybody who lives in New York, everybody in New York thinks if it's in New York, it's everywhere, and if it's no, in New York, it's New eminently York. important. I was in Connecticut. You said you, you said, oh, well, where New York area? Yeah. Well, well people area. from that part of the world think that if it's there, it's everywhere. Guess what? It's not. I've been in I've been in Cologne, Germany. It was in Cologne, Germany. Tom. I don't care. <laughs> It's not everywhere. Okay. Well, that was the owner that was of the owner of Dunkin' insight. Donuts. By the way, the owner of Dunkin' Donuts is the owner of Baskin Robbins. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, tune in and get an education. Are you talking about the owner of Baskin Robbins from time to time? No, I'm just telling you because uh, I, I read the paper. You ought uh, to try it sometime. Well, I don't understand why you didn't mention at all. Because that's where I read that in the paper that the managers receive tip share for serving coffee. I don't understand if you're going to. I read you what was in the. I read you what was in the L.A. Times. I, I don't really care. I, you know what? I don't think anybody there should get a tip. I, I I will not tip anybody at Starbucks ever for any reason. I don't disagree. I agree with you 100 percent with that. I think you're. A and dick. and I think if they're going to do that, they should put a sign up that tells people. That Susie, your favorite barista, is going to get a, a an infinitesimal fraction of what you're putting in the jar. Well, that's my other question, Tom. Is that why why is every barista a woman? I mean, I I've been to several Starbucks, and it's not one. It's not even close to 100 percent women. It's just high school kids. So what? I don't, get I don't understand. It. Every, every time you talk about a barista, the fake name is Susie or whichever. Or... You know what? Don't be a brick. Okay, you understand. Uh, that's enough. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. That's right. Starbucks got nicked by the, uh, by the court in California. They have to pay back $100 million to baristas because they were secretly, unbeknownst to you, uh, taking the money out of the tip jar and giving it to shift supervisors and, and only a little bit to baristas. Sound like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I support the feminists. Are you a feminist? Yes, I am. Really? Yeah, they're 100% equal to men. I don't pay for nothing. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Starbucks has to give $100 million back to baristas after it was discovered through a class action lawsuit that they took the money out of the tip jar and they were giving it to shift supervisors, essentially managers. Some of the money went to baristas, but not much. I say don't tip any of them anyway. What are you doing? 1 800 5800 Tom. Here's Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Uh, Eric. Yeah, I just want to say first that I agree with you about the Starbucks thing. It's ridiculous. And I do this crazy thing where I make my own coffee. But what I wanted to say was that. Oh, that's uh, wacky. 
<laughs> yeah, it is, huh? Isn't it? Yeah, what I wanted to say is you, earlier you said something along the lines that you don't see Hispanics working at Starbucks. I think that has to do more where the Starbucks is located at, because if you go up to Starbucks in uh, City of Commerce, Montebello, or Monterey Park, most of the people behind the counter are Hispanic. But wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that, all right, that might be true. But then think- why is it in my neighborhood there are Hispanics working at McDonald's, Jack in the Box, El Pollo Loco, mm. Wendy's, Carl's Jr., and Burger King? Yeah, that I don't. I, I mean, I, the only thing I could think of is that mostly people that they work in Starbucks. Maybe like, they no, couldn't but, get Caucasians to work in the city of Commerce. That, yeah, that is true. I mean, there are not that many Caucasians around that area, and but it could also be that if you look at the age of the people working at Starbucks, they're mostly like high school kids. You know, no, no older than maybe twenty one or something like that. You know, it could be that they don't want to. I don't know, travel all the way over there. I don't I don't know. I, I really don't have an answer to that. But, I mean, you're welcome to go check out. The I'm suspicious. Cities. I go into Starbucks and I see a lot of white people uh-huh. and a few black people. Uh-huh. And that's it. Yeah, I think that that has to do that has to do with location, definitely. Because I mean, go check out the one. But that's Mar- crazy. Mar- I I Mar- I have never seen. I, I have seen one white woman working at El Pollo Loco. She worked at uh, 18th Street in La Cienega. I even know where it was. And oh, she was like, uh, she was that like in her early. Do with she, if you go to a Pollo Loco in the city of Whittier or McDonald's in the city of Whittier, you'll see white people working working there. Right. So the Hispanic right? people come to El Pollo Loco in West Hollywood, and the white people they go to Whittier. Well, that's because uh, a lot of white people live in Whittier. I mean, you're welcome to go check it out for yourself if you, do, if you don't believe me. I will. <laughs> <laughs> check it out. Oh, don't worry. I will. And by the way, I, I live in the Hollywood Hills, and you come down the hill, and there you are with all these. Uh, you got the Sunset Strip there and everything. And yeah, I, mean, um, I, I, I can't really explain why it is the way it is, but I mean, check out the ones in Montebello, City of Commerce, and wait here for white people working at McDonald's and fast food places. You gotta, <laughs> yeah, it's different. I guess so. All right, Eric. All right. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the call. Here's Isaac on the Tom Likes Show. Hello, Isaac. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Hey, Tom. This is my. This is just the beginning of Starbucks uh, troubles. Um, you know, I, I when I read this lawsuit last Saturday, I was the happiest person al- around because um, you know they deserve everything they're gonna get. Uh, they went down from twenty-six billion dollar to thirteen billion dollar in a year, and also. You know, taking advantage of their poor kids that are getting uh, minimum wage and um, sharing their tips, that's not fair at all. I, uh, I, all, I have a business um, similar to Starbucks. Um, but know. no, here's what doesn't make any sense. They spend so much time telling you how their coffee is fair trade coffee. Oh, we're not going to rip off the poor farmer. Oh, you know. And meanwhile, they pay kids minimum wage to work there. I mean, how about instead of uh, having a tip jar, uh, you have fair trade baristas? Where you pay kids eight dollars an hour, or ten dollars an hour, or fourteen dollars an hour, and you say no tip jar. We'll pay the employees. Thank you very much. How about that? Well, the only thing is like they're looking at the bottom line is they're for their bank account to get bigger. They don't really care about their employees. But um, but the, the point is, is, anybody who puts money in a tip jar at Starbucks is an idiot. I yeah I, I believe so too because I I never went to Starbucks like the, maybe the ten times I went there in my life. I never, I never tip the employees. Uh, they're, they're rude. Uh, you know, they, uh, they think they're uh, because of the, the hype of the place. They think they're also the, um, you know, the, they're better than you as well. Even the employees, they think they're better than the customers. Uh, the other thing with Starbucks, um, a few years ago, about three years ago, the CEO went on TV, and um, he, he insulted me and he insulted my race. He, he went on TV and said. Uh, all those all Palestinian race are terrorists. Ever since that day, I hated Starbucks, and I, wow. I wanted all my friends to stop going there because that that CEO is not intelligent for him to make that comment. Oh, I don't remember that comment, but wow, I'd be insulted too. Ooh, but I don't remember. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. All right. Well. You know, I was going to say, not to defend Starbucks or anything, but, you know, if you go in there for a regular cup of coffee, it's like a buck sixty to a buck ninety. 
for just a cup of coffee. But the yeah, second but, you go in but, there but, but, a, but, but, but a cup of coffee, wait, wait, a cup of coffee at McDonald's, which was rated higher by Consumer Reports than Starbucks, is a dollar. Is a dollar. So they're like six, So you're paying sixty cents to say I'm cool enough to go to Starbucks. Sixty percent more. Wow. You know, and the thing on minimum wage, right? Don't they do something good with insurance, though, for their employees? Don't they give, like, all of their insu- their employees insurance regardless of status? I don't know what they give or how they give, but the point is a company that makes that much money, I'm not tipping their employees. Sorry, oh, I, not I doing agree. I agree. No, I'm going to agree with you there. I don't think you have to. I don't think you know, you if they can't. All. By the way, if this causes them to lose people because people stop tipping, maybe they'll raise the salaries there. Yeah, I think a lot I, of people go there for the status and because they can say they know. Exactly but there's no what status. There was status in 1997. Come on, this is so old school. Please, <laughs> it's, just cha- it it's, just, it it's just a chain. It's just it's just a big now. chain. And you could go in there and uh, talk about your big dot com IPO. Okay, but come on, those days are over. This is true. Hey, Tom, I want to say you saved my life, too. Um, I like that. You know, I, was, I was married. Stupid mistake in the first place. But sure is. I, uh, I was listening to your show one day, and you made the advice, and I think you should say it again, that after 10 years, you owe alimony for everything, for life. In that's California, yes. In California. And that's something that I didn't know. And so at eight and a half years after hearing that, uh, I said, yeah, you know, I really don't like her that much. And you got out. Oh, yeah, I got out. I got out. I paid. I paid. I was honest. I paid. You know, I paid my child support. I do everything I'm supposed to there. But I got out of the alimony deal real sweet. Uh, You know, I make good money. um, How did she react when you dumped her? Um, Yeah, not so favorably. But, you know, I laid it out on the line and just said, look, it's over. It's not, you know, I don't love you. I'm really not in love with you anymore. This is not fun. And, you know, since leaving her, I've had, you know, wonderful girlfriends, great sex, beautiful young women, and it's just, it's much better for me, much better for me. So I, I'm 100% with you on the fact that uh, getting married is a stupid thing to do. It's only there for women. Uh, no doubt about that, Mike. Thank you. Elaine on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Great. I wanted to let you know that this is not just something that goes on at Starbucks. I worked at a very, very high-end restaurant, and right after the Starbucks article came out in the paper, I think it was yesterday, or the story broke, I received three emails from former um, co-workers, and we are now considering a lawsuit against our former employer, who, where the manager and the owner both took from a tip pool. And one of the laws that exists is that if you're in a tip pool, you have to agree to a tip pool. Every single employee has to agree to a tip pool. Um, this, the laws are a little bit different in the state that this is occurring in that, because it's not happening in California. But I wanted to point it out to people that when you're in restaurants, and I ask all the time, do you guys tip pool? And I ask, and if a server is giving me great service, I'm going to give them their money. I'm like, this is for you. This is not for you to share in the tip pool. And I always ask that question, whether I'm eating at Spago or I'm eating at, you know, the cheapest little Mexican restaurant on the Sunset Strip. It doesn't matter. You should always ask. I think that's a great, great idea. Yeah, because you never know. And uh, California is a little bit different. I was working in a state where you make $2.13 an hour as a server. So all of that money goes to taxes. The only money you make is the money that you make from tips. It's a really exploitive industry. And wow. this is not – Starbucks is not the only place that this happens. So people should really consider when they're eating out, don't be afraid to ask your servers. And, you know, maybe it's because I, I worked in the industry for so long. But don't be afraid to ask your servers, hey, are you in a tip pool or do you get to take home everything that we, we provide you as for a gratuity? And – a lot of the time, servers are really, really grateful. I mean, I did it for 12 years. It bought me a home. Um, you know, I, I, it paid for college for me. I mean, to work in the service industry, everybody should have to do it, either service or retail, at least once in their lives so they know what it's like. But don't be afraid to ask your servers because, honestly, you truly don't know where that money is going, whether you're working, whether it's a Starbucks or you're working in a five-star restaurant. You really don't know for sure unless you ask. Good points. Thank you for that, Elaine. Appreciate the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. You got that? Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Our web address to hear our show streaming live is blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.